I'm Roland Mircha with uh, Propinquity Advisors. I'm here with John Calamos Sr., who's the CEO and co-CIO of Calamos. Mm -hmm. um, glad to have you here in Asia. Thank you. Could, could you give us a sense of uh, what trends you're seeing in, in the market and, and the things that you're trying to take advantage of? Well, uh, you know, the, the, obviously uh, the trends in the market is really the risk on, risk off, uh, due to all the macro factors, you know, is, is the, the Eurozone in a recession, what's happening, and uh, you know, our view is uh, that looks a little tough going in, in Europe right now. The U.S. seems to at least uh, be, be uh, at least recovering uh, better, you know, maybe slow growth, yeah. uh, you know, but uh, if you consider the political environment all over the world, quite frankly, uh, it really talks about more volatility, uh, but, uh, you know, the flip side of uh, volatility is opportunity, so how do we take advantage of the, of the opportunities? And speaking of opportunities, where are, you, where are you seeing opportunities now? Well, we are seeing opportunities uh, in the equity market. We think um, uh, if, if you take a little bit longer term thing, uh, look a little bit further than uh, the near term volatility, uh, I think people are saying, okay, a market did well so far this year, what, what happens now? Uh, well, you know, I think you have to look through that, that near term volatility a little bit further, and where we see opportunity is really in growth type of companies, global growth companies. Uh, and, and really, the theme there is the growth of the middle class and middle class consumption all over the world. We want to have companies that really are accessing the, the middle class consumption. It's more important where the revenue stream of the company comes from than where the company's headquarters. Does that, does that mean we can find global companies sitting in the U.S., for instance? That yeah, we, we can find them in Switzerland. Yeah. Swatch. So, oh, you own a Swiss company. But, well, how much revenue do you think comes from Switzerland for Swatch? You know, 3%, 4%. So we're looking at global companies uh, in where are those revenue streams are. And we think they're undervalued in here. Uh, there's not that much distinction between value companies and growth companies in here. And if, in fact, the economy continues to recover, you'll see that. You'll see the differences in that. And we saw it already this year, and you'll see it can become more pronounced. The problem is it's so tough to count. So you, you have to you have to be there before the event instead of after the event. And is it largely in equities where you're seeing opportunities? Or? Uh, yeah, in the uh, we, we're overweighted equities uh, today in, in growth. In the bond market side, we're uh, we're we're in a camp that uh, traditional government bonds, long duration uh, investment grade bonds, uh, we're really keeping away. Even in our we we actually run a total return bond fund uh, and uh, we have three year duration in that because it makes no sense to go out for a few basis points. Uh, but what we are seeing opportunity is really in the mid grades uh, and uh, what we call a high income fund. Uh, in that high income fund, we have some below investment grade, some really right at investment grade. Uh, and there we can get a 7% coupon, five year duration. Uh, and the interesting thing about that market in the past, when interest rates have gone up, of course, if interest rates go up now, the traditional bond market gets greater. Uh, that bond market, what typically happens is the spreads uh, compress, and you don't get the principal hit, and in the meantime, you're getting a 7% coupon. Hmm. So we, we like that part of the market. What we aren't doing, though, is reaching down to the triple Cs and the distress area. You pick up uh, maybe 100 basis points, another 1%, uh, in a percentage point in yield, but you're taking a lot more risk. So we'd rather we'd rather be in that safer area. It's more for pension funds, conservative investors that say this is a good place to be in in, in the fixed income side of your asset allocation. So you're seeing you're seeing some quality there, but you're also getting the income. What about income through dividend paying stocks? Is that something of interest? Uh, yeah, I, I think that, that makes uh, that makes some sense. But uh, you know that's probably a lower percentage of our 
what we think uh, when when as this thing turns, you know, a uh, dividend paying stock might pay three or four percent, right? But the difference between say a no dividend stock and a growth stock, look at Apple this year, up forty percent. Right. What's that two or three percent worth there? So we think uh, the the growth stocks are really undervalued here, and that's what would be. So as the environment becomes more global in terms of investing, what are you seeing at, at the core of client portfolios or what should be at the core of client portfolios? Well, the way we look at core, core is uh, core holdings you don't change. You know, the core holdings are designed for an investor's particular risk tolerance. So like for example an emerging market, should th is that core or is it tactical? And so in, in my opinion they're both. Yeah. You know, uh, using our uh, maybe some convertibles and a lower risk management type of thing, uh, emerging markets are part of our core holdings. Now we're not going to get all the upside, but we're, we're damping the downside as well. Now, if we want, if we're very aggressive about the emerging markets uh, because of flows and valuations, we may add other strategy to make that tactical. So the core is is very um, is very low volatile equity strategy it doesn't change much uh, so, so that's that's kind of where we're at there okay yeah. thank you John thank you thank you very much